uh, two people that are running for there, well, one person ain't going to get it. It's just what it is, amen? But that's why it ought to be a matter of prayer. We're not trying to show favoritism one toward another. Matter of fact, I don't even vote uh, because uh, I oversee everything, and, and so therefore I don't vote. But anyhow, uh, we want what God wants us to have, amen? amen? And so that's why we make it a matter of prayer on all things that we do. And so uh, that's very important. The Bible says in Psalm 64, he says, Hear my voice, O God, and my prayer preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked and from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. I tell you, there's not a greater pair of hands to be in than, than be in the Lord's. Amen. Aren't you glad God loves us and cares for us, goes above and beyond, and does all these things for us? Amen. Isn't it good? As y'all are getting these passed out this morning, I am... Uh, I'm holding on to a pair of glasses up here, and nobody has cleaned them just yet. Is anybody missing their reading glasses? I probably, good night, I'd probably get me a pair of these things. <laughs> they actually, they actually probably would help me out some. God look up here and say, boy, preacher's looking strange. But, uh, you know, truthfully, I probably do need a pair of these things. But anyways, if somebody missing a pair of reading glasses, they're up here on the pulpit. We'll be happy to get them back to you. Also, somebody's watch. Does this watch belong to anybody? I said the other night, you know, about being, uh, we, we've turned into being the lost and the found. Truthfully, we are the lost and the found. It was kind of brought up to me and said, uh, Richard, you know, we, we are the lost and found. I said, you're exactly right. We are the lost and found. We, we go looking for the lost. And when we find them, we praise God for them. Amen? So we are the lost and found. And, uh, but anyhow, we do thank God for that. But if you know whose watch that is or if you know whose glasses those are, uh, be sure and let me know, and we'll get them back to them. And uh, we thank God for that. Now, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Lord, as we bow before you, as we come to the throne, thank you. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the honor. Now, Lord, as we do sign these ballots today, I pray that we'll do what's right. We'll do what's needful and necessary. We'll do what you put on our hearts to do. And I pray, Lord, that the two that won't be voted in, they won't take it hard. They won't feel different or difficult about it. They'll understand it was thy will. It was thy, what you wanted, and that's fine. Because, Lord, we want what you want, and we want your will to be done. Continue to bless and grow and prosper this church. See us through it in the days ahead. Lord, heal our, hand, uh, heal, heal our land as we've uh, uh, made it a matter of prayer to, to keep lifting that up. Because, Lord, we want our land healed. And I pray, Lord, you will in a mighty way. Thank you, dear Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Fellas, if y'all will uh, go ahead and uh, when, when y'all get them filled up and everything, or get them filled up, filled out, then uh, we'll take them up at the, uh, at the uh, time of the offering this morning. All right. So y'all just drop them in the offering plate along with everything else, and then uh, we'll sort through them and get, get everything back at the end of the service. All right. All right, brother. <clears throat> my last, my first name is John, just in case you forgot you're still a brother, you, aren't you? you? You looked at me, though, but I, I thought, you know, me and you are having that thing where we're forgetting all the time. <laughs> well, I know it's John. It's, it's a brother. You didn't want brother? It's the brother part? You know, you know he forgot that tonight was the Super Bowl, <laughs> and he, he planned something. He looked at me and told me about it, and I was like, well, that ain't nothing. I forgot to even set the sound up back there yesterday <laughs> because I forgot it and told my wife. So I don't feel so bad now. So, you know, as you get older, they say that happens to you, but... Is there something you can eat or do for that besides just trusting God and let him put ice cream? <laughs> works good. I'm going to try, I'm gonna try what Brother Alex is saying. If, if it works, if that works. <laughs> we'll be eating a lot of that. <laughs> there you go. But if you are a visitor today at Faith Baptist Church, if you would look in front of the pew and fill one of these out for us and put it in the offering plate when it comes by, we'd appreciate it. And we'll try to get back in touch with you. If you would, stand with me, please. To God be the glory, page 162. To God be the glory, great things He has done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son. To yield in His life and atonement for sin, and open the life. 
six and we'll go. I come to the garden alone while the dew what he's trying to get at, but he's going to pay for it every, sure enough. Anyway, fellas, y'all come on and get ready to receive an offering this morning. Uh, there's so much that we are looking forward to, and he's right. I did not think anything about the Super Bowl tonight, because I hadn't really paid much attention to football over the last, uh, well, I guess everybody has to make their own choices up on them things, but anyhow, uh, I hadn't paid much attention to it, and yet yeah, tonight we are going to be showing a, a video in the back after the service tonight. Amen. You said, well, that's going to cut me out of my football. Well, you're going to have to make a choice, I guess, is uh, the bottom line of that. But we're going to, tonight we're going to show the, 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 the Hobbinger. And uh, if you had never seen it, it's, uh, it's real interesting, centered around 9-11. It's, uh, it's really dealing with the fact of uh, where America's at right now and how America needs to wake up to what God's trying to get their attention on. Amen. And so uh, we'll show that tonight. And uh, you've probably seen the sign-up list out there. You said, well, when? Well, we're after the evening service tonight. We're going to have a regular service tonight, and then after that we're going to go in the back and got all these little finger foods and, and such like that. And somebody mentioned uh, ice cream. You know, I wouldn't hurt. it wouldn't bother me none if you brought ice cream tonight. I didn't buy ice cream. Oh, <laughs> Man. You know, every time we turn around, he's talking about ice cream. I figured he might would bring some tonight. But anyhow, you said it was a cure-all. You said it would fix, fix all them things. So everybody's going to Brother Alex's after the, the, the movie tonight. Amen. Showing up. <laughs> It'd be a good time to go get ice cream. 
You betcha. But anyways, looking forward to that tonight. And then, of course, uh, this Friday night at Gondolas. Now, 6.30 is the time. But here's the deal. 6 o'clock, if you'll show up here at the church at 6 o'clock, and uh, we're going to take some vans over there so that uh, uh, we can kind of load up. And, and uh, you say, well, how many people can go in the vans? Well, that's 45 of us. Amen. And so uh, if you want to stop by here and, and we, we all ride over together, that'd be great too. But we'll leave here at 6 o'clock heading over to Gondolas there in Tullahoma. And uh, that's why we've had the sign-up sheet out there and everything. Looking forward to having a wonderful Valentine banquet there on Friday night. All right, so that's what we got out in front of us. And then, of course, we got the uh, putting the Bibles together the last Tuesday of the month. And uh, that gives us a pretty much uh, full month. Say amen right there. So a lot of things going on right now. Looking forward to what God's doing. But keep praying for this nation. Keep praying for what's going on. And lift each other up in prayer because I got news for you. Everybody in here has something they're going through. I guarantee it. Amen. And so y'all lift each other up in prayer. This morning as we're getting ready to go to prayer and ask the blessing over the offering, Brother Bill, if you'll lead us in prayer, but before, remember to pray for Miss Sherry Antris' granddaughter there and make a special prayer. And y'all pray with us uh, over her. Uh, we, want, we want the doctors to find out what's going on. You know, can't fix what, what you don't know what's going on. So they need to know what's going on so they can fix it and, and hopefully get her well. And so uh, we pray that God some way, somehow will work that out or maybe heal her. And, and, and so if God will heal her, and that would be great too. But anyways, you, you pray for her and pray over her services, pray for her church, and pray for our nation, brother, and uh, lead us in prayer. Amen.
two young ladies. Uh, I was talking to Marissa the other day, and I just, um, God, he laid on my heart about two or three weeks ago. You know, preacher talked about this the other day. You know, when the Holy Spirit leaves, leaves something on your heart, you need to automatically go do it because he put it there for a reason. Amen. And I was telling Marissa the other day that she had played a song that about three weeks ago God had given me to get done, and I sort of laxed around and didn't do it, which was People Need the Lord, which was a song that he wanted done. And I sort of got lax, but did you know that that Sunday she come up and she played that on the piano? And then I went and I asked her, I said, I, I was telling her about the story, and she said, uh, I said, did you just play that? And she said, no, she said, I just picked it out that day. Wasn't it? So that just goes to show you, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, use what he tells Amen. you, okay? Amen. Amen. That has nothing to do with this song, but these girls have been wanting to do this song, so when some of y'all out there get to want to do a song, and the Holy Spirit lays it on your heart, please let us know.
tickles me as I look and I see as two sisters are sitting there going back and forth. When one messes up, the other's giving her the eye. <laughs> sure enough, I, you know, that's, that's, that's good. You think it's easy, you get up here and try it, amen? Sure enough, it, it's, it is not easy getting before people and doing what you're, what you're doing. But you know, when God puts it on your heart, Brother John, it's true. God puts it on your heart, you do what God puts on your heart. That's how he moves us, that's how he motivates us. Uh, just make sure that he's the one putting it on your heart, amen? That's the important part. Make sure he's the one leading you, guiding you. And the way to do that is it, a, is it based upon spiritual things, amen? Or is it based upon a physical thing? Got your Bibles with you this morning. Go with me to the book of Philippians in chapter number 4. Philippians in chapter number 4. I have been blessed. Uh, some of my blessings you just witnessed just right there just a moment ago. I'm very, uh, very uh, humbled by what God's given to me. Uh, matter of fact, uh, there were several years, several years before my first child came along. Uh, I've always said it like this. I don't know if they're trying to age me or if they're trying to try to keep me young, one or the other. But uh, thank God for them. I keep hearing y'all talk about these grandbabies. I ain't quite reached into that status yet. But uh, I hear tell those grandbabies, they say you're better than babies. I don't know how that could be so, but I'll have to wait until I get there, amen. But in the meantime, thank God for what God's given to me. And uh, I have been blessed. I'm very thankful for that. As a matter of fact, I'm thankful for the house that God's brought us here to, amen, and given us an opportunity. Uh, it saddens me when I hear of churches all around the country uh, that still haven't opened their doors. It saddens me, and it really does. But I am thankful, Brother Gene, that we're able to come here and to be a part, amen. And so I'm very thankful for that. But I, I, I want to look at the scriptures today in Philippians chapter 4. If you're with me this morning, say amen. amen. Good to have you. In verse number 18, the Bible says, But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God, now this is what's pleasing to God, but my God, he says, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father a, a, a be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus, the brethren which are with me. Greet you, all the saints, salute you, chiefly they that are of Sisera, of Sisera's house. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts here today. I pray that you'll be in the message today as only you can, both here and at home, wherever that may be, wherever they're tuning in all around the world, dear Lord. I pray it will be uplifting and encouraging. To be a message to remind us of how big and how great you are. Thank you, dear Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. You know, when I start to really think about this, I, for one, am thankful for the cross. I really am. I'm thankful for Jesus dying and giving his blood. I'm thankful for his resurrection. Amen. But I want you to understand something to another today, that Jesus is much more than the cross. Most people's relationship with Jesus is simply centered around the cross of Calvary. But I'm here to tell you, if that's all your relationship is, thank God, I mean, it, you know, at least it's something, amen, but God's much more bigger than the cross. He super exceeds the cross. As a matter of fact, he ain't on the cross no more. And you're not going to get him back on the cross anymore. Those days have come and passed. You're not going to see Jesus dying on a cross ever again. It's not going to happen. Amen. But where you're going to see the Lord now is on a throne. On a throne. He is a big God. And my God is able to do above and beyond anything I say, think, or do. My God is able. Number one, I want you to see today, my God goes above and beyond. Beyond anything I can think of. Look with me, verse number 18. But I have all and abound. I am full and have received of Epaphroditus. The things were sent from you. An odor, a, a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Look, I have all I need. It goes above and beyond anything that God could 
Give to me, I got it, amen, all that I have. Verse number 12, look at it with me. I know both how to abase and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. What that means, Danny, is I have all I need with God. God goes beyond any of my expectations. Matter of fact, go with me to the book of Ephesians in chapter number 2 in verse number 4. Ephesians 2 verse number 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved. Now, why did God do such a thing as that? Because he loves us. Because he's rich in mercy. It means, Brother John, he goes above and beyond. Amen. He's rich in mercy. Hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means it's beyond the cross. Beyond the cross. He's given us a place in heaven. And thank God for that. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Now, has God been good to you? Has God blessed you? I thank God that God used that song this morning. They didn't have any idea what this message was going to be. Matter of fact, I didn't know it until God gave it to me. So when God shows up in a mighty way, look, God orchestrated every bit of this. This wasn't uh, by our creating of anything. God had already been preparing that song. I didn't know that y'all had already been talking about that. And when I, heard, when I, when I came to church this morning, uh, I heard, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, your girls are going to be singing. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I didn't know what they were going to be singing, Miss Claudia, but praise God what they sang. Amen. I have been blessed. You know what that means? It means it's more than the cross. More than the cross. Now, they don't take away from the cross. It has its purpose. It has its place. But guess what? Jesus is more than a Savior on the cross. Amen. Doesn't mean he ain't. It means he's more than. He's a big God. So look what he says. And has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through, for, uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What that basically means is, you and I have hope beyond the cross. Amen. Because of God's grace, God's mercy, God's riches, what God's given to us. With that in mind, go with me to Romans in chapter number 5. Romans in chapter number 5. Verse number 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only do I have salvation, but I've got grace. Not only do I have grace, but I have peace. Read on. Verse 18 of chapter 5. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. It only goes so far with sin. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you understand that what I have, because my God is a big God, goes beyond anything I can say, think, or do? Wow. I serve a big God. It goes beyond. It goes beyond. You mean God loves me that much? You betcha. In 2 Thessalonians, in chapter number 1, and verse number 3, the Bible says it like this. We are, bound to thank, uh, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Now, not only has God given me himself, but God went above and beyond by giving you me. And giving you me and me you. You understand? You see, the fact is, he goes above and beyond 
because he knows what you need before you get there. Let me explain it to you like this. You all realize that when he created the garden, when he created the garden, did he have to wait until all the fruit was grown out? Or did he wait until all the fruit was grown out? Y'all see what I just said right there? You see, the fact of the matter is, he waited until everything was ready before he had to put them in the garden. Amen. That meant that when they walked in there, they had it already provided for them. Come on down through the scriptures there, and you'll see the children of Israel were led out of Egypt. And for 40 years, they were there in the desert, amen, in the wilderness. We've all read the story. We know what it's talking about, how they spent 40 years in the wilderness. Now, here's the deal. Something that could have taken just a couple of days took 40 years. You know why? Because they didn't take God at his word. If they would have accepted the word of God in a few days' time, they could have went into the promised land. Could they not? Amen? And walked in there, and guess what? Had houses and food already prepared. You say, how do you know that? Because 40 years later, when they walked in the promised land, they had houses and food already prepared. You see how God works? He goes beyond. He goes beyond. And because he goes beyond... I'm here to tell you, as I'm living today, I don't worry about what's coming because I know my God is providing beyond my expectations. Think about that. You see, I'm not relying upon myself. I'm not relying upon my own abilities. I realize that if I honor and serve him, like he says in Luke 21, he will give me my meat in due season. You know what that means? That means he knows how to provide for me. He knows how to take care of me. And that's what my God does. He goes beyond my expectations. He goes above and beyond. Do you not realize how good God is to us? Now why? That brings me to the second thing. Input. Input. Now I mentioned it just a moment ago, but look with me verse number 18 again. But I have all and abound. I am full. And have received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you. Now there's two different people, uh, types of people mentioned in this passage of scripture. There are those that show up. And then there, there are those that orchestrate and send. Amen. Now you got the church here, Philippi. And they sent Epaphroditus there to take care of Paul in the process. Amen. Now, what does that mean? That brings me to the second thing. Do you realize that everybody that God has input in my life has been there for my betterment and for my good? I mean it like this. Everybody that is here this morning is a blessing to me. Amen. I look at it that way. I see it that way. Because of what God's put into my life, I thank God for how he's blessed me. Look with me, verse number 21. Salute every saint in, in, in Christ Jesus, the brethren which are with me greet you. You know what Paul's talking about? He's thankful for those that are in his life. He's thankful for those that he has. Here's the deal. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for everybody that's here. Everybody. You know why? Everybody plays a role. Everybody plays a part. Everybody that he puts into this church, I'm thankful for. I salute everyone. Salute all the saints in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he's thankful for him. Read on. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's uh, household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So he's thankful for them and he's praying for them. He's seeking their welfare and their well-being. Why? He's grateful. Go back with me to chapter 2 of the book of Philippians in verse number 25. Verse 25 says, I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had uh, been uh, sick. For indeed he was sick, nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also. Here's the thing that I really realize and understand, Brother Tom, how we're connected and how we affect each other. Think about that. Think about that. You know, we lifted up a 
young lady this morning in our prayer because her sister's granddaughter needs prayer. Why? Because it affects her greatly. It affects us greatly. Amen. You see, God has connected us in such a way. The input, the people he's put in my life matter so much by his hand. Now, I'm here to tell you, I don't know about you, but uh, I didn't like it back last year when we were shut down. Now, well, technically, y'all know we weren't shut down here, but several weren't able to come for a period of time. How well did y'all like that? You like being able to be here, amen? Being a part of things, being input into the church. You know why that's so important? Because we need each other. We feed off of one another. We encourage each other. You know, Brother John, it was awful hard looking out there not seeing the people, amen? You see that input, what God put us into, what God's placed in our lives. How many of you have ever went through some hardship and some heartaches in your life? And after the hardship and the heartache, would you able to look back over that and say, thank you, Lord, because it got me to where I'm at now? The first church I pastored was a church by the name of Calvary Baptist Church in Middleton, or over in, uh, in West Tennessee. To this day, I thank God for Calvary Baptist Church. Now, let me explain it to you like this. It's a group of people that I came very close to getting out of the ministry over. I loved them. I put the time in. I, I did all the necessary things. I did everything I could. Matter of fact, in the four and a half years I was there, we had 450 people come to Christ. Now, if you know anything about where I was, it's in a town of about 650 people. Small. You thought it was small around here. Mm, that was small. But we were going to prison two nights a week, and in that we were reaching out, we were door knocking, we were doing all the things we could to try to win the people that were around us. And in that period of time, God gave us 450 souls of salvation. Thank God for that. After about three years in, they begin to reveal themselves, they begin to show themselves, and they begin to come at me in a very nasty way. In such a way that when all was said and done and I resigned and I left, I actually thought about getting out of the ministry. Now my wife, she begged me. She said, no, please don't do it. She said, I fear the hand of God would be rough against us if you did. Don't do it. But I was broken. I was ripped to shreds. You said, but you said you were thankful for them people. Yes, I am. Because after God brought me to the other side of that, I began to look back over that and I began to realize that was for my good. That was for my growth. That was for my development. That made me a better minister, a better man of God in the process by what I went through there many years ago. And sometimes when we look at things like that and we say, oh, mercy, that person that was in my life, they were such a whore to me. They were such a, 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 a bad person to me. And we start going down the line of all that they did to us. But at the same time, we don't begin to examine and realize that it grew us into the people that we are today. I begin to realize that even the difficulties and the hardships have been for my good. So what God's been put into my life shows me how big of a God I serve. I couldn't see it, Kim, at the time. I couldn't fathom it at the time how good God was being to me. But I promise you, on the other side of it, I look back and I say, thank God for all his great blessings. Gene, it made me a better minister and made me a better man to serve and honor him. You know, we ought not kick and scream as much as we do. We ought not fuss and complain as much as we do. We ought to realize God's put us here and put us through this for a reason and for a purpose. You got to understand, in order to make us the tools 
being able to be used by God the way that he does, it takes some heat. It takes some rubbing on it. Have you all ever seen a knife being made? It takes some real work to get it to where it gets sharp enough to do the job. It's the same thing with us. We didn't just happen and start out the way that we are. No, we've had to go through 13 years now. Say amen. amen. By what we went through, it's made us who we are now. And so I thank God for that. If I went around the room today and I started going over each and every one's personality in here, I guarantee you there's not one person that's like another person in here. But we all serve a purpose, and we're all part of the bigger plan that God's put us here for. Let me put it to you like this. How many of y'all have ever had babies? And after you had the babies, the doctor said you got to take them home. <laughs> right? Guess what? Didn't get to pick and choose. You brought them in here. You had them. Now take them home. <laughs> right? It's the way it works. Same thing in the church house. You can't pick and choose who God puts in the church house either. You got to serve with them. That's the same as taking them home. You got to serve with them. You got to learn how to get along with one another. I thank God for who He's put in my life to develop me, to make me what I am today. Amen. It shows how big of a God I serve. What that means is, matter of fact, if you look at it. There's not two people that's just alike in the whole world. We're all different because our God has made us that way. What a big God. That brings me to the third thing this morning I want you to see. Not only the input, the people that he's put in my life, and I thank God for that. Not only the beyond, that he'll go above and beyond anything I say, think, or do. But it brings me to the third thing, and this is a very important one. Look with me, verse number 18. But I have all and abound, and I am full, and have received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. You know why I know i got a big God? It's what I've gotten from him what I've gotten from him or should I say what's been given to me what's been given to me reveals how big a God I serve yes I've got salvation and I thank God for that I praise his name but do you realize he didn't stop there John chapter 12 go there with me he didn't stop there and by the way he don't want us to stop there neither John in chapter 12 in verse number 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they, they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, a spikener, very costly, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment now let me remind you chapter 11 you'll see where Lazarus their brother was in the tomb now he's been brought out of the tomb he's been brought back to life and now he's sitting with them in the room there in the house and Mary is so rejoicing over everything she breaks out this ointment all right? Y'all see? Read on. This pan of ointment and the spike and very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wept uh, and wiped his feet with her hair. Now that's, that's very symbolic because their hair is so sacred to them and the feet is such a repulse to them. And so she wiped it with her hair. He went on and said, uh, Then saith one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a, a thief and had the bag. And bear 
what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying uh, has she kept this. For the poor always uh, ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Now, what in the world was Mary doing? What was she, what was she was doing? Because she understood the person that was before her meant so much more. What I've gotten from my Lord and Savior, I'm here to tell you, I'll take my all and I'll put it on the altar. You know why? Because I realize God is so much more. Whenever the offering plate comes by, do you realize it's not a time to be begrudging or reluctant, but a time to be rejoicing and thankful? Let me explain it to you like this. I can't give you what I ain't got, but thank God what I have is because God's given it to me. How many of you have ever well, let's get real honest about this thing. Back in the day, it was considered the cheap meat to be eating bologna. Y'all with me? Ain't no more. They found out that a bunch of us, a bunch of hicks and everything, we like bologna. So they raised the price on us. Amen? But y'all remember back in the day, bologna was something, man. Oh, yeah. But I grew up on bologna, and I like me some bologna. Amen. The thicker, the better. Say amen right there. Rag bologna, praise the Lord. Thank you, God. He said, I can receive it with Thanksgiving, and I do. You know? I think the cheap food today would be what those romaine noodles. Amen? Don't y'all laugh. Y'all got them in your cupboards like I got them in mine. Amen? Matter of fact, I got them little cups uh, that they're in my office right now. Shored up. Romaine noodles. Y'all thought those were de uh, delicacies because it says romaine noodles. Amen? Shored up. We all know it's for What did you get? What, 10 of them for a dollar? Come on. Come on now. I don't know. I went shopping in the world. Is that what it is, Mama? Ten for a dollar? <laughs> Whatever it is. No, it's not. They jack it up. See, we got to quit liking this stuff. We get to liking it, and they start jacking the price up on it. Amen? Right? Why do we like this? We're appreciative of what we have. We're thankful for what we've been given. Amen? We are. I remember Christmas, and I remember not very few presents being underneath the tree. Amen? But I got news for you. The one that was under there for me, I was thankful for. I was grateful. I didn't rip through that and say, well, where's the next one? No, sir, no, ma'am. Because I appreciated what I had gotten. See, what I've gotten with the Lord, I don't rip through what God gives me and say, all right, God, now what's next? Because I appreciate what I've gotten. My God's given me so much that I'm so thankful for. I'm thankful for his church. I'm thankful for his family. I'm thankful for all that he blesses me with. And that reveals what a big God I have. So as I go forward into these days in which we're finding ourselves, and all this turmoil and trouble in our land. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. I can't help but rejoice. Because I serve a big God. And I know my God is bigger than Washington, D.C. And I know my God is able to go above and beyond. I know my God has showed me. Look, I've been at hard times. Y'all remember hard times? It's kind of like the man and his wife. They were sitting there, and every time that they would uh, get down on hard times, he'd say, uh, Honey, uh, we're not going to eat the ham just yet because we ain't reached hard times yet. And finally, one day, it got to be hard times. He said, All right, honey, go get, the, go get that ham out of the deep freeze. And she said, I can't, honey. The other day, hard times came by, and I gave it to him. <laughs> I know what hard times is. I've been there. But my God brought me through. My God brought me through it. My God has delivered me from it. I remember what I once was. I mean, all thinking back, and your mind goes back to those days when you didn't have the Lord. And how the world had a hold on you. And how your life was crumbling. God reached down and he touched you. He saved you. From that point in time, you'll never be the same. Now, do we think
think all of a sudden God's just going to walk away and act as if we don't exist. No. Hey, he's more than the cross. Now he's out in front of us waiting there for the day that Brother John will meet him in the air. He's already making preparation. What did he say in John chapter number 14? I go to prepare a place for you. You know what he's doing? He's staying ahead of us, making sure that when we get there, it's already taken care of. Do we not understand what a big God we've got? Number one, he goes beyond. Number two, look what he's put into our lives. And number three, look what we've got. Yeah, he's a big God, all right. He's a big God. And that's why I trust him. That's why I serve him. That's why I believe in him. I'm going to ask you very simply this morning. How many of us sitting here have put our faith and trust in him? If you haven't, there's an altar for you. I'd invite you to step out and find out how you too can go to heaven when you die. How many of us understand that the people in our lives are there for our good? And God's using them to grow us and to develop us in the process. What a good God that we serve. Amen. And how many of us realize that what we've been given what we got is to be shared to those we come in contact with. You see, he's a big God. And it's a lot better when we let it grow. I've never one time, and y'all listen to me very carefully as we go into the altar time. i never one time seen love expunged or done away with when it's shared. You know what happens to love when it's shared? It grows. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts this morning. I pray that you bring us to our knees. I pray for this one here that doesn't know you. They'll come to know you before it's everlasting too late. I pray for the believer here this morning, Lord. Remind us of how big you are, much more than the cross. We're thankful for the cross, but Lord, you're not on that cross anymore. It served its purpose. You're on the throne. And what you do and what you've done and what you're going to do is so much the more. And we thank you for it. And Lord, I pray that you remind us of what we are and where we're at and what our responsibilities are in these days in which we live. In Christ's name, amen. I'll stand. What page, Brother John? Page 280. 280. If God's on your heart, you come. Whatever the need is, you come. Some started, others need to. Come on right now. Soft come on right now. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for hey, me. Hey. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earth tenderly Jesus is calling calling oh sinner come home why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading pleading for you and for me why should we Mercies for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are we?
Appreciate y'all being here this morning. I'll go ahead and give you the results of what we got this morning. Uh, our deacons are Vernon Teeters, Alex Pitts, Kenneth Gunn, and Tim Rogers. And so we thank God for that. I uh, thank God for everybody that was on the list. Uh, matter of fact, uh, talking to my brother uh, the other day, and he finally, finally talked him into letting his name be put in there. And I imagine he'll probably get put in there again uh, if we have time left there, Brother Jeff. But he said, you know, preacher, he said, I want what God wants. And I know he means that. I know he definitely mean, means that. And I appreciate that. But, you know, here's the thing. Just because Brother Jeff doesn't uh, uh, get nominated for a deacon, that doesn't mean Brother Jeff isn't available in this church. You understand that? You see, Brother Jeff, he wants to serve. He's willing to serve. Matter of fact, he does a lot of things. Y'all may not know this, but he does things in the back back there with the kids and, and such. That's a great blessing, and I thank God for that. You know, and I'm not trying to make any excuses. I'm just saying, see, some of you don't know, don't really realize. You know, like right now, this morning, we got people in the back that are serving God, doing things in the back. And a lot of times, uh, you don't meet them or you don't get to see them because uh, <clears throat> unless you go back there, you won't know that they're back there. Amen. But we got uh, we got a good group, group of people back there this morning, and so we thank God for that. But I thank God for everybody that serves in this church. Amen. And it means a lot. Then, of course, the uh, Sunday school superintendent is Danny, is going to continue to be the, that. And uh, he, uh, I, I think he was running neck and neck with William and everything. Sorry, William, you got, you got bumped out by Danny. <laughs> no, no. From what I understand, they're both my boys, so it's, it, you know what you said, Vern? They're both my bo boys, so one of my boys, one of my boys was going to win, one of my boys was going to lose. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> and then, of course, Jason is our uh, church clerk, and uh, we thank God for that. And I appreciate y'all voting and, and, and I hope pray you, you made it a matter of prayer. I got a real blessing for you this morning. I got a real blessing for you. You know, you know it's awesome when God does what God does. You know, you, you playing that song, come home, come home, come home. But we got some folk come home this morning, amen. Yeah. Join up.
Father, we thank you for each individual in this church, Father. Father, I just ask that you'll be with them, be with their family. Lord, watch over and protect them during the week. Father, when they come back to church, Lord, may they be coming back to church in your name. Father, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. But most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to give us everlasting life. These things we ask.